Land Rover Discovery uh, 2017. When we scanned the computer, there was like 30 different fault codes. Uh, the, but the majority of the fault codes uh, suggested that we could have a turbo failure. Okay, so we're gonna jack this car up, but before we do that, we go to auto data. In the auto data, it says jacking mode, and it will give you instruction on how to jack it up. Basically, it's saying just lift the car up all the way up when you jack it up, and when you de after you finish the service or whatever you got to deactivate the jacking mode because all the wheels going to be on the air because we got two poster hoist two post hoist so the wheels going to be free on the air so we're going to have to follow this just jack the car up all the way and jack it up okay i'll show you in the car what we're doing just uh, start the car And let it idle and just press that button to jack it up and the car will start going up and on the screen you'll see the jacking um, car is lifting up to maximum height Once the messages say it's on maximum height, you can turn the car off now and then start proceeding to jacking the car up. Start with the scan tool, we, like I said, we had 30 different fault codes and more, majority of the fault code was suggesting that it could have a boost pressure issue, as in turbo or something in the induction system. So I hooked up my scan tool and let's just uh, select that for now. And you can see the computer is desiring 104 kPa. We got a pressure of 94 kPa actual pressure. So when I rev the engine, just rev it a little bit. Just watch that number. A little bit more. I'll just quickly go quickly. Yeah. See that coming down to 60, 75. Just go again. Rev it a little bit. See, it's coming down, but the boost pressure is desiring much higher. Uh, do it again. See, it's going into vacuum instead of boost. So that's already suggests this turbo is not making boost or something like that. Uh, so next thing I did just to see rule out uh, our um, just to rule out our um, boost control. So let's see if we can find that boost control. Um, that's the desired position, 80%. And that's the actual position so just to rule out a couple of things just rule out a couple of things you can see this is the controller in in the um, turbo I believe is desiring 80% and we got actually 80% now we'll wrap the car up and down a bit and we'll see they're both following kind of each other so i don't think the boost controller wastegate controller is at fault so that's why i went into uh, looking at uh, mechanical faults so let's go back under the hood now you stay there let me rev it you watch this turbo line just rev it see how it's sucking in and do that yeah so go again so it physically has a lot of uh, vacuum uh, I've never seen a diesel engine make that kind of vacuum but if someone can explain to me why Land Rover does maybe it's uh, it's normal so I thought something is blocked here first of all I thought something is blocked here at the air filter or the turbo area so what I did I took this pipe off and there was a lot of sucking in there you can you can feel it suck my hand in start the car back up vacuum so this vacuum is actually traveling from here all the way to here I can feel the same vacuum right here at the air filter too 
So it's not a blockage from here to the air filter, it's not a blockage. It's actually the engine producing a lot of vacuum. I think which is normal for Land Rover, I don't know. Because I've never seen a diesel car make that kind of vacuum. So you can see a lot of uh, smoke coming out. I got both my hoses off, but you can see at the air filter a lot of uh, fumes coming out. That's the oil leak at the turbo. That's the fume you're seeing right here. Turbo sits right up here, that's your DPF. Uh, filter there right up there there's a turbo you can't see it I mean you can't touch it you can't do any kind of testing there so it's super difficult I don't even think you can actually replace that turbo without taking the engine off I'm not sure but if someone's done it let us let me know in the comment section uh, if I get the job I'll probably show you how to do it but don't know if the customer is willing to spend that kind of money on this car with me but uh, we'll see Anyway, I, can't, I couldn't do any kind of testing here. I couldn't get to it from anywhere, from the top or the bottom. Now, what I did here, I took this turbo hose off. That's coming from the turbo going into the intercooler. That intercooler sits right behind here. That's your intercooler, um, behind that um, uh, mud, mud guard. Um, so this is going into the uh, intercooler, and you can already see there's a lot of oil there. So it looks like this turbo has been leaking a lot of oil now. The amount of oil that come out of that pipe, I can show you. Just by sticking my screwdriver in there. Um. So I'm just going to use this GP strap. Just trying to get down there on that pipe and you can see amount of oil in that turbo. Just shocking where it's dripping. Did you see that? So that turbo intercooler is full of oil. Lucky this car didn't run away uh, on us anyway. Now, I couldn't get to the turbo, I couldn't see anything. I wanted to actually see why the turbo is not making boost but I just don't have any options. So what I did was I, um, I put a camera into the pipes trying to get to the turbo and I'll show you how I did it. Uh, I'll have to do that from upstairs. I took the pipe coming from uh, I took the pipe coming from this way in air filter to the going into the turbo and I stick my long camera about half a meter down that hole and I'm trying to see what the turbo what the turbo is doing uh, it was super difficult but uh, I got it done I got a little video I can show you in a minute now the turbo lifts down there and the mechanic from Land Rover told me that you gotta take this plastic off this uh, brace uh, bar off and then you can get sort of access from here but I don't see how we're gonna do that even if you take this off but again we'll find out when it comes to it 